today in the Audio Hotline studio, we have the Behringer XM8500 versus the Behringer BA85A. Now, even though these microphones are made by the same company and they're honestly a pretty similar price, there are some key differences that we'll definitely go over. Although today's video won't be too based around like specifics for these microphones. However, I did do an in-depth review for each of these. So I'll link that down below if you wanna go check out the individual reviews for these microphones. I'm actually very excited to make these two Behringer family members battle it out. I want to see which one is better. But also my other goal is to make the Behringer family Thanksgiving just awkward as hell next year. Well, let's dark and do it. Welcome all audio nerds to the audio hotline. And as I said before, we got the two Behringer family members, the brothers, the sisters, whatever you want to call them, the BA85A and the XM8500. Today I'm using my Zoom H6 to record these microphones. They have very similar gain, so they're both set to about 55%. There might be 1% up, 1% down on one or the other, but pretty much 55%. I'm not going to do any post-processing in this review unless I, of course, disclose it to you. These two microphones do have a very small price difference. It actually used to be a little bit bigger which is interesting. So the XM8500 for the last while has been $20. I've ordered a lot of them, so I would know the price well. And when the BA85A was released, it came out at $25. Now something interesting I noticed is that actually the XM8500 price creeped up a little bit. Actually on B&H, it's $24. So the XM8500 is only a dollar less than the BA85A. Now I'm not going to speculate why they did that. It, well, actually just, yeah, no, I am. I'm, I am going to speculate. I feel like when Behringer came out with the BA85A, a lot of people were like, oh, it's the upgrade to the XM8500. Awesome. But I don't think that's what Behringer was essentially trying to achieve. I think that they were basically just coming out with a super cardioid version of this microphone. But I don't think that they were, you know, trying to make this one obsolete. I think they were just like, hey, here's a different option. Because cardioid microphones may work way better for some people and super cardioid microphones might work better for other people. So I don't think it was necessarily an upgrade situation as much as it was like a, hey, why don't we put out a budget super cardioid microphone? But now let's go ahead and move on to some details about these microphones. Like I said before, we're not going to necessarily go through all the specifications of these microphones. We're just going to briefly touch on some of that, and then we're just going to talk about the differences between these microphones. Then we're going to test them out, and then of course I'll uh, give you my opinion on it. Some key differences between the XM8500 and the BA85A is that the XM8500 is a cardioid microphone, and the BA85A is a super cardioid microphone. Now, if you're just starting out in audio, you might be asking yourself, what in the shit does that mean? Let me tell you, sir, or ma'am, or person. I'm not, I'm not gonna assume I did a little bit, but I took it back. Super cardioid and cardioid are considered polar patterns. Now, cardioid and super cardioid microphones are both unidirectional. That means that there is one part of the microphone that is most sensitive, and the other parts aren't as sensitive. Unlike an omnidirectional microphone that's sensitive everywhere. The most sensitive part for both of these microphones is the front. That's why I'm talking into the front and that's why these microphones are angled at my mouth hole. But even though they are both sensitive in the same spot, there are a couple differences in their polar pattern. As I stated before, cardioid microphones like the XM8500 are most sensitive in front, and they roughly have about a 130 degree angle of sensitivity. So that means that 130 degrees from the front of the microphone is gonna be the most sensitive part. The microphone goes around and gets less sensitive on the sides and least sensitive in the back for cardioid microphones. Much like the cardioid microphone, the super cardioid microphone is most sensitive in the front as well, but it actually has a 110 degree angle of sensitivity. So it's a little bit more narrow. So if I move suddenly, you'll hear a drop off compared to when I move suddenly, you won't hear as big of a drop off with a cardioid microphone. With a super cardioid microphone, it's most sensitive in the front. It gets less sensitive on the sides. And then in the back, there's a little bit more sensitivity than the cardioid has. And I'll show you the graphs right here. And I'll kind of give you a little bit of an example. Well, a lot of people might be like, what does that mean? You know, like, why does it matter? Let me give you an example. 
if you're a live singer, let's say you have a stage monitor on the front of the stage so you can hear yourself. Maybe you haven't invested in uh, in ear monitors yet, you cheap bastard. If that happens, if you have a cardioid microphone, the best place to actually put that monitor is directly behind the microphone. Therefore, it'll create less feedback. But if you're using a super cardioid microphone like this one or the Beta 58A, there's that sensitivity directly behind it. So actually monitor placement, you'd actually want to place it to the sides of the microphone. Now for people who are podcasting or gaming or whatever, you might be asking yourself, hey, how would that affect me? Well, it could have to do with keyboard placement, having another person in the room talking to you. If you're using a super cardioid microphone and you have it up on a stand, you don't want someone directly behind that microphone talking because your mic will pick that up a lot more than if they were to the side. But if you were using a cardioid microphone, you would want them directly behind the microphone. So it's just one of those things that's good to know if you're going to invest in one of these microphones to use for live or podcasting or whatever. When it comes to these microphones, the polar pattern is definitely the biggest difference. Very quickly, I'll put the specs up on the screen so you can read through them just real quick. If you need to nerd out a little bit longer, go ahead and press that pause button. But don't forget, to press the play again, player. Well, now that we've talked about some of the basics and some of the differences and some of the similarities, let's go ahead and test these microphones out. During this testing, I will occasionally use these windscreens. These are the Shure Pop Stopper windscreens, and these are by far the best, like inexpensive ones. They're like five bucks. Just spend the extra couple dollars. You'll thank yourself eventually. This one actually doubles as a, a clown nose, so you even get more for your money. All right, let's go ahead and start by doing a proximity test. I will start with the XM8500 and then move over to the BA85A for all of these tests. When you get really close to the XM8500, here's how it sounds. And when you get really close to the BA85A, here's how it sounds. Now we're getting really deliciously close to these cat fur covered windscreens and here's how the XM8500 sounds. And really close with the windscreen on, here is how the BA85A sounds. All right, now let's go ahead and do a plosive test. Peter Piper picked a patch of pickled peanutses. 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 All right, now with the windscreen on, Peter Piper picked a patch of pickled peanutses. 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 All right, now we're going to test out these microphones' polar patterns with some white noise. Now, since we talked about polar pattern earlier with the super cardioid and cardioid, I'm just going to play the white noise into the back of these microphones so you can see the difference in how much it picks up. Now, if you're going to type on a keyboard directly behind the XM8500, here's how it sounds. If you're going to type on a keyboard behind the BA85A, here's how it sounds. Now, if you're going to use this on stage and you're going to pass it back in between your hands, you know, put it up on the mic stand, take it off said mic stand, and here's how the XM8500 is going to sound. And if you're going to get a little handsy with the BA85A, here's how it's going to sound. Just passing it back and forth, putting it on the mic stand, and taking it off the mic stand as well. Now that we've gone through some of the basics and some of the differences between these microphones and we tested them out, let's go ahead and get to my review of the XM8500 and the BA85A. When I originally got the BA85A, I kind of had the expectation that it was going to be extremely similar to the XM8500, but even though these have a lot of similarities, they do actually sound quite a bit different, and the fact that they have completely different polar patterns helps in the sound aspect of them being pretty different from one another. I completely agree with earlier version of myself. I don't think that the BA85A was an upgrade to the XM8500. I just think it was a nice addition for people who need you know, something a little bit different. So it's hard for me to put these up against each other because honestly, I like both of them for what they both are. I really think that they're 
both fantastic. I will say that I do tend to prefer the cardioid polar pattern more so than the super cardioid polar pattern, but I think both of these are great just in different situations and for different people with different needs. However, when it comes to sound, I think they're both really good, but I will say that there is a frequency in the BA85A, kind of in the mid-range, that really bugs me. Even though it sounds like a bit of a cop-out, and it completely is, I can't really decide which one I like more because I just understand that they're for different situations and I could see each of them excelling in different ways. So overall, I'm just a, a big fan of both of these and I would absolutely recommend both or either. As I was editing this video and the more and more I listened to each of these microphones, I started leaning toward one of them a little bit more. I still think they are both very good microphones and they are both amazing deals. But I will say, since I have both of them in my mic locker, I will probably end up reaching for the XM8500 a little bit more. I'm just a little bit happier with the overall results. No, it's not perfect. There's a little bit of harshness to both of these microphones. But overall, I think that I lean a little bit more toward the XM8500. You might like the BA85A a little bit more, and I don't think that's a mistake at all. Maybe it's comfort, but I just like the XM8500. All right, now we can go back to the video. Thank you for watching this comparison between the XM8500 and the BA85A. I hope that it helped you out, helped you decide which one you want, and uh, also, I hope you had fun. Stay tuned for a lot of other reviews and a big thank you to all of the people that subscribe. You are seriously the most wonderful people probably that exist. Yeah. And thank you for watching the audio hotline. I'll see you audio nerds. I feel like the goddamn president with all these microphones in front of me. One thing, uh, real quick. If one more person gives their opinion on how Behringer or Behringer or Behringer is supposed to be pronounced, I'm going to lose my fucking mind. Just listen to the mic, man. Just listen to it. Just listen to the mic, dude. People just eat up pronunciation shit. Oh my gosh.